Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first in our series of season recap for football uh, podcast episodes on the Meyer, Keith Glock, and Brandon Fury kicking off uh, what should be a pretty interesting couple of episodes. Brando, how you doing, bud? I'm good. I'm really excited. Uh, glad we found the time to sit down and do this. Yeah, uh, we probably should have <laughs> sped this up a little bit and done it a little closer to the end of the season, but you know, that is what it is. It's actually, uh, I think in some ways, maybe gives you guys a little bit of time to decompress and really allow things to, to sink in a little bit. Um, yeah. you know, with, with a little I'm bit sure of the viewers, I'm sure the viewers are lining up waiting for it. Oh, oh yeah. They've been, waiting, sure, yeah. they've been waiting for weeks. So <laughs> the, uh, with a little bit of say, uh, space now between the end of the year and, and kind of where you sit as we approach Thanksgiving, uh, as we record this the Monday before Thanksgiving, um, just what's your your first thoughts about you know the past season? Yeah, uh, well, it's still always gonna hurt. Um, you know, just just being done with high school football. Um, but you know, I'm proud of proud of the team and the way the way we responded to to being on four because it's very easy to just roll over. Probably still would have beat JFK and and uh, and could have lost to Franklin. So we could have easily been what, two and seven, three and six with missing the playoffs. Uh, so I'm proud that we, uh, we finished strong, got in there and uh, yeah. The, I imagine, I have to imagine at least that, you know, so many of the things that you end up remembering after high school, you know, well after high school in the years and, you know, for me, it's decades, you know, now that have, have since passed since high school athletics <laughs> that, uh, you know, it's, it's not always the on-field stuff. You're going to remember some of that on-field stuff, but the off-field stuff, you know, whether it's just practice or, you know, film or hanging out with each other, that's the stuff that kind of endures. And you guys had a little bit of a um, kind of a quirky schedule thing going on with, you know, teachers convention and when that you know, game before Northern Highlands was getting played. So you guys couldn't even really get into the building to watch film. Tell, tell me about what you guys did. Yeah, so we, uh, I, I was prepared for that because sophomore year uh, against Randolph, we had the same thing. We actually had three days off for whatever reason. We had that Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And, and I remember how it was just, there was a lack of focus and just kind of that sluggish start to the game. Um, and I knew we couldn't afford to do that against a much better team. Um, so what I, what I did was I talked to, to Alex Benitez uh, and then Coach Santa, Coach Cardi. We planned to have a couple of the guys, I think we got like 15 guys, um, to Alex's house, uh, hung out, did a film session with Coach Cardi and Coach Santa for about an hour, and then ate dinner and just hung out. And that, that was such a, uh, was one of the most memorable things, uh, definitely from the season, but probably all throughout high school is just, you know, we didn't know it was going to be the last thing, but it, it was kind of like that, that final piece. Um, and it was just such a, such a great night um, just with the team chemistry and bonding and stuff like that. You mentioned Randolph. I mean, I know that coach Millich, um, you know, with the tragedy that they had up there, you know, the, our coaching staff and their coaching staff was close. I mean, that's just a, a horrendous situation for everybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about. Uh, head coach at Randolph um, was complaining of chest pains during practice leading up to uh, the team's pending state championship game and uh, went to the hospital and ended up having a, a tear in his, in his heart and passed away that same day. I mean, it, it was just, it's a, it's a crazy thing. I can't like, how as a player do you like, when you heard about something like that, like what do you, what goes through your head? Well, first thoughts out to him and his family um, and, and his team actually, sorry to correct you. That was Ramapo, not Randolph. Oh, Ramapo. But, oh my but, gosh. I, well, I know, not that it matters. I mean, really we're just yeah, talking. But, about um, but still, I mean, that's just, I, I couldn't imagine, like, we saw how when when Coach Millich had to step away last year um, for his personal reasons, we saw how that impacted us, and, and we were worried for him. Um, and just just that's just such a terrible situation. 
Um, especially for those guys that kind of buy into that program, buy into that coach. Um, hopefully they, they use that play for him. Yeah. And it's Ramon Poe head coach, Joe Gibbs or Joe Gibbs, Drew Gibbs, uh, that I was speaking about, uh, there who, who tragically passed away. Um, there's a, a connection there, uh, in that Ramapo is set to play Northern Highlands. Um, and that game still hasn't actually been played yet. They're, they're just getting set to play it. Um, because of that, you know, it was postponed, obviously, um, Cranford won a state championship, Northern Highlands playing for a state championship. Does that validate you guys at all in some way? I think so. Uh, had a heated debate with my brother the other night. Um, and I definitely use those, those pieces, uh, in it. Um, so definitely, um, we oh, wait, what, what was the debate? Were you, you guys going back? Well, whose team was better? Well, not not whose team was better because I I can admit that my sophomore year team was was probably better. Um, <laughs> but just the the schedule that he played when he was a freshman and sophomore versus our schedule, he was saying how ours doesn't even compare. And, and, and I, I, I understand that Ridge, Phillipsburg, Borough, um, Bridgewater, very, very good teams. He was just completely invalidating. He, he, he acknowledged Cranford, but like a Woodbridge, um, Colonia, North Hunterdon, just I understand the, the level difference, but he was just invalidating them. And I, and I was trying to explain that this is not the same teams that we played when you played when, when, when it was your senior year. Um, Colonia is not like Colonia has gotten better. Woodbridge has gotten better. North Hunterdon's gotten better since he's been in high school. And I was trying to explain that to him. Yeah. I, I mean, I just think things have gotten a little better across the board, you know, for sure. But at the top end, I, I mean, so, that Cranford team and that Northern Highlands team are, oh, yeah. you know, as good a football teams as we, as we've played. Um, oh, yeah. No doubt. No doubt about it. Um, you, you have, now your next phase of this is you head to Marist and, um, you know, just as you start to look ahead a little bit um, and it's no longer kind of like way off somewhere down the road, it's kind of in the immediacy of the windshield. Where's your head at? So I went up to Marist last, or last this past weekend, Saturday for their senior day. Um, terrible loss to Butler sucks they were 0-7 in conference we were 5-2 and two, so we we blew that one but after the game um seeing the coaches reactions and and the uh, the emotion that they showed um really I, I mean I was already through the roof excited to go but seeing that emotion and that that passion um knowing that that this was the end of the season there's no way that they could have gotten the playoffs after the loss um, just really, really made me want to play for them even more seeing that. Um, so I, I'm very excited. Uh, I know the, the jump from high school to college is significant, um, but I'll be ready for it. And, and I'm, I couldn't be more excited to, uh, to be a Red Fox. You know, and this is, I think probably a little bit more special for you than, than maybe some others. Your dad was a, was a red Fox and played, played football there. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. He, uh, he played on the, the D3 team. Uh, oh, you're you're team always before. so quick to point out. To, that, and I'm <laughs> uh, sure you point that out to him. <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, it's, it's all the same. Uh, I, I'm happy that I can go somewhere where, where he had his, his legacy. He, uh, for some reason, he's still pretty well known there. Um, played with one of the coaches coached him he was there two of them actually were on staff when he was there he's class of 92 so they've been there a while um the head coach became the OC the year after he left and then the DC is was his teammate so there's a lot of familiarity um which is nice that I can go into to an environment where I'm not a complete stranger but I also know that I have to work for it. And it doesn't matter what my dad did or who he knows that if I, I'm not going to be able to just roll in there, uh, I'm going to have to come ready to play. So, but it is, it is nice knowing um, the, the, the kind of culture that's, that's there just because I see it with my dad. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty cool. 
I mean, it's funny that you even said that because it's not a thing we talk about in basketball as we do in like some other sports and in, in a lot of walks of life in terms of uh, nepotism and kind of being, you know, gifted spots or whatever. Football is the great equalizer, man. If you, like it is so apparent if you don't fit, like you don't work in, in a particular spot. And I, I have to imagine as a player, like you could spot it like almost instantaneously. If you're like, this guy cannot play. Why is he in, the, in yeah, this position? We, yeah, I've, I've seen that before. But also, I mean, that's something Coach Milich always talks about. Like there's no hiding in football. They, they will find you. If you don't belong on the field, they will find you. Um, and that's why it's always important to prepare in, in the off season and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think football is just so different than so many other sports, not only because of that. It's just like one of the things that makes it, you know, so interesting. I, I think it's why America is, you know, insanely Especially. captivated by it for, you know, three out of seven days of our week, whether between high school, college and, and pro football for, you know, six months, seven months out of the year, it just kind of dominates everything. But, it's um, a special game and it's it's not for everyone so so the guys that you know play it when you when your teammates that's why it's such a special bond because um it's not for everybody not everybody for whatever reason can do it and not that saying like football players are superior to other sports but like you really need all 11 guys you can't have it's not like basketball or lacrosse where you can you know, have one guy that can carry you for, for most of the way, like you need everyone doing their job on every single play or else it won't go. The, uh, I guess I'll just attack this, you know, straight, a little more straightforward. Do you worry about concussions? You know, I, cause I feel like this yeah. is a, it, it's such a, a thing. And, and we were talking about this uh, yesterday, we were watching the Cowboys chiefs game and, you know, you see CD hit his head on the ground you know, after a play and, and all the guys in the room of us that have played contact sports were like, Oh God, that hurts so much. Like it hurts more than sometimes getting hit, you know, directly in the head with some, you know, by somebody else. Um, and then like that kind of like spurred off other conversations about John Lynch saying, you know, he played 15 years in the NFL. He never got a concussion. And then it was just like, well, are some guys more susceptible to, you know, those like sub concussive hits, you know, being worse than others. And, you know, it, it kind of, dominated our conversation for an hour so you don't you don't worry about that i you can't you can't play worry that i mean that's that's the thing if you play like i'm trying to think there, there was an example where where a similar conversation actually came up this past weekend if you if you nobody plays the game to get hurt so like if you're worried about getting hurt it's probably not for you you have to go out there knowing that you're putting your body on the line at every single play as a lineman, I could get rolled up on very easily on every single play, tear an ACL, and I'm done. Like, that that can happen. Just honestly probably more likely as a lineman for concussions because as a lineman, you, you already start so close where you don't have – I'm not – I'm it's rare that I'm running full speed at somebody unless it's like a screen. So I don't personally have to worry about that that much, and I don't – I mean, I think that's an interesting question, especially for you know somebody like Alex or, or or Mike or Mark, one of one of the more athletes, um, because they kind of have to deal with you know either running at someone full speed or someone running at them full speed. Um, so I'll let them kind of take that too, if if you want to save that question as well. But I don't think that they worry about it because you really can't. If you play scared and you play worried, it's not going to go well for you. And that actually in in my opinion, probably increases your chance of getting hurt when you're, when you're playing scared and tentative like that. Yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. And I guess I didn't mean it. Like, is it, do you worry about it? Like during the course of play, I, I, you know, I think if you're an athlete on any kind of level that is meaningful, you have so much other stuff to think about during the game mm -hmm. and during the play that, you know, it, to, to even have time to worry is, is, you know, not a thing that is you could even do, but I just meant more like, in the global scale, when you think about football and playing, and now that you're heading into an off season and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Well then, I mean, I'm still going to keep my answer at no, it's not, it's not something that concerns me personally. Um, I've played football since I was five years old tackle since I was seven and I've gotten two very, very 
one very, very mild concussion, and then one that only lasted longer because I didn't report it earlier. So to me, that's enough data personally that doesn't, it doesn't wor worry me. Um, but I'm sure everyone's different. Um, and it is serious if you, if you do get a concussion, it is something you probably should report um, and not try to play through. It's the one, the one injury that I think everyone can agree on. It's not one you want to try to tough out like other ones. Uh, yeah, no, no doubt about that. Uh, do you do you feel like <laughs> things are are different and safer now? Like I, I don't know if you have a long enough time period of play perspective to to feel that. Um, I feel that in high school, it it, it I don't see there that a big change. I definitely see it when I watch college and uh, especially NFL, um, just the, the penalties that are called. I, you don't really see them as much in high school. Um, for example, I, I was at the Hillsborough State Championship game, and I saw the biggest hit I have ever seen live in my life. Absolute murder. And they threw a flag and then ended up getting waved off. And and I think that just I, – I don't I feel like it's just not targeting and stuff isn't called as much in high school as it is in college and then in the NFL, just the head-to-head -head – contact um it's called way more so i don't see the change in me playing like when i'm on the field but watching football i definitely do see a change um and it's also probably a credit to a change in technique that our coaches are teaching us so that probably has something to do with it too whereas the nfl guys they're all they're older so they learn differently whereas we kind of as we got to, to sixth, seventh, eighth grade is when it really became the big issue. And we started to learn how to not hit with our head. So I think as football goes on, I think we'll see a lot less of it because now guys are learning from that young age, how to, how to hit safely. I think it's an interesting point about how like almost the guys at the highest level where like the fear when, uh, the rules were starting to get changed was that like, Oh, no, one's going to watch football. You're taking the physicality, you know, like there's a, there was a lot of blabber about that. And that now almost it's like the guys that are getting paid a lot of money are like the most cautious guys, you know, because they're like, well, I, I know I don't want to be out and lose out on these millions of dollars. So I, I feel like it's, you know, the, the change is kind of working, you know, from the top down, I guess, for all the reasons you said, but you know, we don't need to sit here and talk about head hits all day, but <laughs> I guess. So let's, let's talk about things that are a little more fun for you now as a, a Montgomery senior, where I suspect a lot of your classmates are like in either. I just finished a whole bunch of college applications and now I'm worried about whether I'm going to get in some places or I'm not, or, you know, other people are just finishing up applications. You're like kicking, you're putting your legs up on the desk and, and hanging out. Right. Yeah. It's uh it's, I was actually talking to Coach Santa about this today. It's tough to, to find a reason to come to school every day um, <laughs> with, some, with some of the classes that I take um, <laughs> and, and having all that stuff done. But it's nice to, to have that taken care of. Um, I see some of my friends getting deferred or, you know, sweating a little bit. But it's nice to know that, that I have that comfort of, of knowing that, where you know I'm gonna get in, but I mean that's a testament to to how hard I worked to be able to put myself in that position where I could know I'm going to school before my senior year. You know what the great one of the great things I like about you, man, is that without any kind of context, if you were to like read a transcript of this interview and you read that statement, that you know just well that's a testament to how hard I've worked. You know somebody who doesn't know you or doesn't you know understand, you know kind of your approach could read that and go like, wow, that was arrogant. And yet you said that right there. And like 0% of me felt that that was arrogant. I, I just, uh, you know, and I, I always feel the need to tell you guys things like that. I think that's the counselor in me is that like, yes, I completely agree with you. You have worked your butt off and you deserve everything. And I just, I couldn't be happier for you, man. Uh, and I hope that I that's validating. That. 
No, that that is because yeah, no, that that could come across as as cocky. I definitely see that. Um, but I mean, I'm I'm just really happy with with you know how I've I've worked the last four plus years, and uh, and hopefully it can lead me to bigger and better places. And but you know what? And the other thing is, it's such a valid thought process. We should be like saying to kids, it's okay to feel proud of the work you have done and to acknowledge like, yeah, I am accomplishing the goal that I set out to accomplish. This is a good thing. Like that, you know, that, that feels like something we should be encouraging. To me, it almost sounds worse when you try to be so like, I don't know what the word is, not like, copy. Yeah, yeah, like deferential to it. Yeah. Right. And then like, no, like, like you worked hard. You deserve to be where you're at. Like, there were people that weren't working as hard as you when you were. So you, you know, um, but yeah, no, I definitely agree. I, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. So we're, we're calling on you for uh, big time duty as we move into uh, the second season of, of the Meyer this year, uh, as we're pumped for basketball, you know, we're kicking it off uh, second week of December. Uh, everything was going great. Thursday the 16th was going to be opening <laughs> night. Friday the 17th, I was taking the family to Radio City to see the Christmas show. And then Grundy's got to go and change everything up. So opening night of the season, I am actually unavailable. But you, to the rescue, will be there doing play-by-play. Uh, take me back a, a little bit to that first Trenton game of you doing the play-by-play there. All the technical bull, you know what, aside, just getting on there and calling that. What do you? What's your recollection of it? Well, if I if I have to be honest, I I don't like I I just I don't like the way I sounded. That I was sick. I don't think that was my best performance. But it was cool to. I mean, I I I think I've we said this off air before, but I'll say it again. I had no time to sit there and be nervous because I was working the entire two hours before the game. So there was, there was no time for me to sit there and be like, what if I mess up? Like, like, what if I don't know what I'm talking about? What if I sound like an idiot? Like, nope, I just went in and, 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 and went. And I think that's kind of the reason why it went um, so well because of that. And, and I mean, we see that, we see that a lot. So like when, when guys, uh, even in football, when you just get thrown in there, someone gets hurt in the middle of the game, and then you just, you look great. Well, you didn't have time to sit there and worry about it all week. So uh, definitely use that to my advantage. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for, for this one. But it was looking, it was looking like it was going to be a blowout, easy win. And then the other week, Curry was like telling me that they, they got some, some guys that quit back and they got a new transfer. So, so this might be a more interesting game uh, against Hillsborough than a lot of people thought. So I'm excited for it. All right. Well, I appreciate the heck out of you, uh, for sure. And, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's so comforting to, for me personally, to know that I can just turn the keys over to you and have it go, you know, well, and certainly, you know, we're not leaving you out on an Island like we did that night at Trenton high and, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Pogue will, will be there, uh, running the show, but for, to, to put on an entertaining product, we're good. We're good. Yeah, so yeah, I'm excited. Uh, all right, so let's wrap up this episode and tell everybody what we have coming up. Uh, over the next uh, week or two, we're going to have, obviously, uh, this episode, and then we are going to do kind of a little bit of mini uh, interview series. Why don't you tell everybody, uh, all the guys that we have on tap? Yeah, so um, up next, after this one drops, uh, you guys will see our interview with Alex Benitez, um, and then we'll get Michael Schmelzer. Mark Jenkins and Gavin Gadetti as well uh, in whatever order we decide. So um, very excited for that. Uh, I know, uh, like I said, a lot of people line up to see this, I'm sure. So um, <laughs> we'll, we'll put out the best product we can. Dozens of people lining up to see <laughs> it. All right. That has been one of the captains, one of my favorite people, uh, Brandon Fury. Uh, from your Montgomery 2021 football team, Brandon, man, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I know we're still getting, you know, it's kind of the beginnings of our, our Meyer season with you this year, but uh, as far as football goes, man, I couldn't be more proud of you. I, I am so happy you guys, you know, even though the final record didn't look probably how you wanted it to, I, I, I think so many things went 
went well in the middle of that season. And you guys really showed the kind of team that you are and the kind of people that you are. And, and I'm so thrilled for you. And uh, all that aside, wish you so much luck as you go forward, man. I appreciate it very, very much. Uh, the whole year, everything's been great with you guys. And uh, um, I'm excited for basketball. On to hoop season. All right, stay tuned uh, as we will drop the next set of podcast episodes over the next week and a half. And all that will lead us right into high school basketball season on Friday, December 17th, as Montgomery opens the basketball season against Hillsborough. Thanks for watching. <laughs>